everyone. I'm Nandi. I'm the research director for ACID. And I'll be your host for this first Art and Design Diaries live interview with um, guests that we would be having for the next few weeks. And today is special because it's our first live interview. Our first set of guests for today's IG Live series entitled Art and Design Diaries is a powerful duo in the architecture field. Their architectural firm has received numerous awards like the 2018 first place MADE or the Metrobank Arts and Design Excellence Awards culture category for their project entitled The Terraces at the O and the 2018 first place Color Bold Design Awards in Cultural Spaces category for APT Studios. Their projects consist of high-profile residential and commercial projects, with some of them gracing the covers of architectural magazines and lifestyle shows. And I suppose you know the couple who I will be joined, wh whom I will be interviewing in a bit. Let me just make sure that they will be coming in in a few minutes. And we're just waiting for them to join us on our live. Hi, ladies Hello. and gentlemen, of course, I'd like to welcome and introduce to you our guests for this first IG Live. We are highly privileged, of course, to have with us Jason and Nikki Bensalido of Bensalido Architects. Hi, Jason. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank Hello. you, Sir Nan. <laughs> And to ask Walk the sir. For, for having us. Uh, sorry, it's a habit that we can't break, sir. Well, eventually you'll get used to it. Eventually, but uh, I don't think eventually. Today. Soon, soon. <laughs> All right. Of course. Of course. Uh, this is um, on a Sunday afternoon. The perfect time to perfect time to sleep. But we are here with Jason and Nikki to hear about their story, learn more about their journey in the architecture field, and be able to share to our viewers. And of course, as ACID is uh, building up its library of information and um, connections in design, we will be um, spending an hour with Jason and Nikki for a few questions about them, about their their practice and about Bensalido Architects. Uh, so let's start. Are you ready, Jason and Nikki? Don't worry, this is not good. Really this is in the phrase when you said about us. <laughs> does that mean our love life too? No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, we can go into that if you want. <laughs> I don't think we should, but this uh, design uh, <laughs> design platform. <laughs> IGO. But we can we can still connect it perhaps uh, okay. because I know that. Um, your your this, your journey as designers um, is triangulated, uh, and I know that you know that, that's part of your <laughs> your philosophy and your your personality as designer. So let's begin. Of course, I'd like you to share with our audience um, your early beginnings, your educational background, as if I don't know. But you know, for 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 you to you know give us a bit of uh, story behind how you have began, uh, began with your um, journey, of course, that normally starts with how did you, how did the two of you meet? When did it all begin? Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I'm Nikki Bansalido. I graduated in 2007 um, from USD. And Sir Nandi, I, I cannot stop calling him Sir because he was my professor in school. And um, he probably has witnessed um, Jason and I get to know each other and, and everything. And up to now, he and um, we have been friends um, for quite some time. But 
yeah, so I, I graduated from USC and um, I took up architecture because I thought it was just all drawing. I, I didn't think that it would be, it would have a lot of math or a lot of um, logical thinking or, or whatnot. But um, there was a time that I was thinking of, you know, not pursuing, but then I was saying that there, there must be a reason for us to be here for for me to be in the practice. And so I worked with Joey Upanko and Associates after I graduated. And that was where I probably learned how to love modern design even more and how to explore and how to get to know, um, how to think creatively, but at the same time think about design. And I was exposed to a lot of um, Italian designers because he was also very fond of furniture design. Um, so he introduced me to a lot of, of designers in that field. And then I took the boards in, in 2010, I think. Um, and yeah, Jason here, we met after I was still a student. He, was, um, he had just passed the board exam, I think. But I'll leave that oh. time to tell the story. If I may, um, if I may mention, uh, I know that both of you are uh, very, you know, very humble about it. But I'd like to mention that Nikki graduated mana cum laude, and Jason is a board top notcher. So I think uh, you know, it speaks highly of uh, where where that those achievements have brought you. So Nikki, continue the story. I I wanted to add to your story, but uh, I let you be the one to share it. There's a lot of go ahead, um, go ahead. Inside story. Study about architectural firms, and he gave me Jason's office as a case study. So <laughs> I didn't know about that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Was that intentional, sir, <laughs> Were you part of the um, orchestration of things to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. So so anyway, yeah, I I took the boards in two thousand and ten, and then um I joined the office. I joined Wendy the Architects in two thousand eleven. Um, that was also the year we we got married. So it from there it was a. Uh, I guess a continuous collaboration between the two of us um, running the office and, and whatnot. And something I learned is that architecture isn't just about design and drawing. It's still also about learning, you know, finance and business dev and accounting. And these are the yeah. things that I never thought I was going to do, but um, it's part of the practice. And so far, I think it's a good collaboration from, from the two of us. That's, so I'm happy to hear that. Jason. Yeah, so for, for me, I love sketching and drawing and painting growing up. Um, I had a particular affinity with comic books, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I would read a lot of uh, comic books, both from Marvel and then eventually Image, because I followed this uh, particular artist named Jim Lee. Um, and then, so I evolved to creating my own comic books, of course, just as a hobby. And uh, ever since then, I remember uh, being fascinated with alternate realities uh, other than our current reality and trying to explore what else is possible apart from uh, the current limitations that uh, uh, we have, right? So growing up, that's kind of uh, the mindset that um, I had. And then eventually, um, I was led into a technical school. And mm -hmm. that's where I learned how that passion for sketching um, I can actually um, implement in drafting because um, when, it, when, when I got to high school, I was made to select a specialty class, which uh, turned out to be industrial drafting for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I found out that I was uh, pretty good with uh, drawing and drafting. And I thought, uh, what would be a field where I could also excel in the same way that I excelled in drawing and drafting? And I thought architecture was that field thinking that it was the same as me, thinking that it was just all about drawing and imagining. Uh, but turns out that it's actually just only one component of the complex practice of architecture. Um, and then I eventually enrolled in USD. But prior to that, 
um, I was accepted as an exchange student uh, and spent a year in Japan. Mm-hmm. Before going to Japan, um, I had taken the entrance exams in UST, was accepted. So much so that when I got back from Japan, uh, automatically it was already UST uh, where I was uh, accepted. And so I found out and learned more about architecture, um, about things that I was not necessarily initially passionate about, like, you know, math. Um, theory and so on, but eventually, the more I fell in, the more I knew about it, the more I fell in love with it. So, oh. yeah, eventually, that led me to pursue uh, architecture. Okay, I'll 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 now connect it to your personality and identity as designers, and of course, you are both known you uh, as a couple or as individual architects, and of course, as the the leaders of Quinsalido Architects. You are known for aiming to contemporize. Filipino architecture and the local design scene with a goal to bring the nation global by staying true to your to our Filipino identity what's what's your trademark design uh, or approach to achieve this or to to realize this vision um i think there are a lot of factors but primary primarily for me is color um Jason has bragged about this, but I don't know how true it is that I brought color into the, the office. Um, She's brought color into my life. Too. Look at the background. <laughs> <laughs> Before, because I'm never going to design anything with color. But um, yeah, I, I really mm. like colors and I really like um, expressing it through bright colors. I think that's one way of um, how we've, we've infused that, that particular identity of Filipino as Filipino characteristics, the one um, where you have fiestas, you know, it's, and we, we as Filipinos, we have a very lively personality that's attributed to um, a, a fiesta or or gatherings, and that brings in a very colorful nature in mm-hmm. any effect. Um, that's one. And I think color is a, a, a big manifestation of, of my personality. It, um, and this is something that I would like to say I've contributed to the office also. Um, and then there's also the, the weaving of different different um, experiences, different cultures, I guess, in, in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we weave into the client's um, brief also. But it, um, one of the things that is very Filipino also is that, you know, we have a mix of different cultures like we have the spanish colonizers before we've had um americans and the japanese and all of these things br- come together and make up who we are right now and i guess that's the same way with how we design things you know we read a lot of um the site a lot of the the characteristics or the, the personalities of the client and then we we put them together to solve the problem and bring it um you know for them to really show who they are, who, who their personality mm-hmm. in the site. Um, yeah, would you like to add? The- yeah, so um, I think more than a trademark, um, uh, something that you can see or um, experience, I think uh, when Salido Architects and, and the collective that uh, we lead, um, it's more of the mindset, the, mm-hmm. the, the central core value, the philosophy that we maintain um, and then apply to different projects, right? So, for example, the, the belief that architecture should never be imposed on a particular uh, design problem is one of our core beliefs. Uh, the mm-hmm. belief that architecture is simply a response uh, to context that it allows itself to be shaped by various components of the context is, I think, the mindset that shapes the various expressions that uh, is produced. Uh, by the office. So, so as far as trademark is concerned, I don't think um, um, you know it was never been. It's never been our intention to have a trademark per se. But that mindset, that mental model, that disposition that we all try to be in, is what we aspire uh, to be when it comes to facing various uh, projects. Yeah, I'd like to connect that to a question that was just typed in by and shout out to Gerald Kitek. Uh, who's asking, do having a style is almost the sum of, of your inhibitions? Or does having a style um, 
equates to the sum of the, your inhibitions. They say it's a kind of straight jacket that keeps you confined to who you were and inhibits you from who you who would who you would become. So I agree. I absolutely agree that if you try to fit yourself um, within the confines of a style that is defined mm -hmm. by the world, then yes, absolutely it becomes a straitjacket because your whole efforts uh, become contributory to you, your force-fitting of yourself towards that predefined style. But the one who defined that style is not yourself. But yeah. if uh, you're talking about a mental model of uh, like what you said, being and becoming, just being yes. yourself and trying to be better, regardless of whatever the world uh, thinks about your work, then that is the opposite of a straitjacket. That is actually uh, freedom in itself. If, if you go beyond the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the um, if you go beyond the fear of being judged, if you apply courage to actually uh, solve the design problem that is given to you by your clients, by your context, um, then, then I guess, that's that that becomes a more free state uh for you as a designer i'll co i'll connect it oh, nikki you wanted to add something go ahead, go ahead sir go ahead oh, i'll connect it to the to the to another um related um aspect of design which is inspiration in your previous interviews you say that you adhere fondly to the contemporary filipino culture in its context what makes you most inspired in your designs or where do you usually draw inspiration from? Um, Nikki, you already mentioned earlier about you know some some events like fiestas and all. But in your designs, and we, we can see this in your uh, portfolio, you you seem to be inspired by by quite a, a lot of things. But how do you select inspirations, especially if you are within that uh, general category of contemporary Filipino architectural design? This perhaps may help our audience, you know, identify better or spot better what could be, you know, good sources of inspiration. Would you like to share? Sure. Um, I think one important aspect for me is play. You know, it, it can mm -hmm. sound very, you know, play, you know, nothing. But, not yeah, not serious or, um, yeah. I, I think play in itself is work because I have a four-year-old and, what I discovered is you learn things. Hi, Annika. <laughs> yeah, what you learn when you're exploring, when play is an exploration. It, it's for kids to know, um, to learn about the world. And that's not different, actually, from how we practice. You know, there's a lot of play, mm -hmm. there's a lot of creativity involved. And um, there are times that when you play, you discover things. And that, for me, is a spark plug of... Um, coming up with designs and coming up with ideas because you can't be serious all the time. I know architecture is a mixture of creativity and the science, right? They always say. Um, so it's not always very serious. You know, it's not very serious from the beginning. There is a lot of seriousness and um, commitment and passion to it. But I think the springboard or the takeoff point is something that is very creative and that's that playful spirit that we all should have. And in order to produce those kinds of designs, there are times that, you know, a lot of architects will come into a rut or, you know, um, especially now that we're in, in our homes, the right? There's not much yeah. idea, there's not much inspiration that you can go out. I used to, I like traveling, so um, I find inspiration in parks, in, in whatever new buildings I see, um, new experiences. But at this point, I realized that you can, you don't have to look very far to find yeah. inspiration because there's always that. And if you visit my well, the Instagram, my Instagram account, it's always color, it's always play because it's in these small things that you really find inspiration yeah. to build up on forms. And then he implements it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but I, I'd have to agree with uh, Mickey because inspiration is everywhere. So there's no one, um, you know, source of inspiration. Uh, like my conversation our conversation with you guys today is mm -hmm. uh, could potentially be a source of um, inspiration. This discourse that we're having, but um, Annika is definitely a constant source of inspiration for us because of what she said—that spirit of play. 
imagine when you put uh you know a, um, a series of blocks in front of a child she'll put it together in her own way regardless of what you think regardless of the rules if it falls it it falls you know if it topples over that's fine so this is the kind of mindset that we try to invite in the office that hey uh through that spirit of play the non-judgmental free um uh i guess uh, mode of experimentation uh without knowing uh you know the end of this journey this process uh mm-hmm. is what we 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 want to try to practice on a daily basis so that uh, we can inculcate that um that that level of in a way serious play um that will end up producing the the designs that we produce in my early years of of practice with with surgery one thing i learned um which i really take to heart and what i bring to the table also right now is to know the rules yeah. first you have to master the rules and then you can break the rules after that and that's right. where a lot of play comes in also eh? because when you're creative when you're designing you make your own rules and then you have to follow it to the t right. and only when you follow it to the t then you can i put it pala you know we can break it we can tweak it this way because you already know um you you established it and as designers the rules are in our hands you know we can create yeah. our own rules the the mandate or or the challenge is just to follow that to the t and i guess that's where design concept comes in you define your design concept you define and of course it, that requires a lot of courage right yes absolutely absolutely a, a lot of guts yeah i mean i i uh, I, I, i this is yeah, actually part of the manifesto which we um develop and evolve um after uh you know we became parents right we mm-hmm. always tell anika that hey it's okay to be afraid that's fine but what's important is we face that that fear right um head on and then overcome it with courage and in a lot of ways uh, we apply it in um the office so uh because in the office uh, we have this experimental spirit uh mm-hmm. where to throw in ideas not knowing if it will work and a lot of times it doesn't work but then if you allow that fear of uh you know an idea being judged or not working um and and the prevent yourself from suggesting that idea then it becomes a lost opportunity right not mm-hmm. knowing that that idea may be a spark plug um to a host of different ideas that may work as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I'll bring it to uh current like the current times that we are living. Uh there's a question here from Lorraine. Hi Lorraine. Lorraine is, is one of our consultants. Um so, so she she types in hi both. I have a question with the hashtag new normal. How are your yeah. designs going to evolve? What is the present and future of Vincelido design given the situation brought by the worldwide pandemic? and that of course uh relates also to you know how how you are um now approaching design if we look at your um past projects for example yung project smart home which is your response to uh typhoon and we are also in a you know similar situation although it's not not not, not necessarily natural disaster but you know how, how would you respond now to the kind of a uh, crisis or situation that we are faced in and how how will that affect your your design strategies in Bensalido Architects? Well, I think one of the philosophies of the office talaga is is random responses, meaning whatever the context is thrown at you, you mm-hmm. respond. And that's um something that takes courage also, like like what you said. Um I think this this pandemic that's been happening has been unprecedented. So it's really up to you, up to us how we want to view it. You know, we can view it as something that causes a lot of anxiety, causes a lot of stress, but we can also be um part of the solution right. whatever yeah. whatever. Right. And um there has been a lot of um bulaga moments like you know, you don't know what's going to happen next, you don't know what to expect, but Um I guess part of the challenge for us is to come up with a response as to how to proceed in the future. 
Yeah. Um, and that's what actually what what Jason and the team are working on right now. Yeah. Um, we've been developing some some ideas that are supposed to be come out soon. Yeah. Um, and we've we've tried to see we we've, we've had Babel um launched in our in our Facebook page and one of the topics there was housing for all. Um, yeah. We talked about we talked about how how our projects could relate to to the pandemic you know addressing by giving different spaces that used to be neglected yeah um such as the roof deck and, and the balcony you know that that's something that i'm actually i find out that we're, we're blessed to have and it could be a lot of use pala at this time so um that there's was planned a, by the way <laughs> there's a lot of, of things that that try, we're trying to get to uh, to adapt to also and you know there's also design of our vision of how to design a condominium, for example, you know how how to apply all of these things and how to um, design a mid-rise or, or offices, and that's coming out. That's in the works. Um, we're 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 working on on some ideas, and that's supposed to be launched soon. Yeah, maybe in the next few weeks. Stand by. Uh, we launched a campaign in our mm -hmm. um, social media um, called Enhanced Explorations. So, um, firstly. Uh, we have a lot of time um, on our hands because we don't, you know, commute. We don't uh, travel to and from the office um, anymore and we work from home. And so we have a lot of extra time. Um, and so uh, one of the mindsets that we have in the office is this constant pursuit uh, for progress. Not perfection, mm -hmm. but progress. So, you know, tomorrow will be better than today. We will be better yeah. tomorrow, right? And so we are using this opportunity um, uh, to to uh, you know come up with different experiments and micro solutions to make our various building typologies better for tomorrow when uh, the pandemic is uh, lifted, right? So um, it's um, we're, we're partnering up with uh, hopefully a media platform um, within the next two weeks. So please do stand by uh, for that. We're hoping to present it to the public so that uh, you know. Um, course uh, people are saying oh what if they steal your ideas that's that's beside the point right um, um i think we're beyond that um um that mindset of keeping secrets to each other trade right. secrets um and so on it's it's we're, we're in this era of um sharing and collaboration and so we said uh, you know let's just share it to the public if one or two or three ideas uh, inspire other people so you know to build on those ideas right. and make it even better. At the end of the day, the people who, I mean, the, the ones who will, um, um, I guess, uh, benefit from this exercise are the people, are the users True. of the building, people designing, regardless of uh, who it is who um, originated, right, uh, that, that, that idea, that design. I think I'd like to connect it. Oh, sorry, Nikki, you were saying. Think, well, there was a question just that I read. Um, what, what about office spaces? What are the what's the forecast in office spaces? I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of work in spaces, um, first and foremost. I know we've come, um, before the pandemic happened, there were talks about, you know, open plans, um, being everybody being at arm's reach, everybody being accessible. And now there's a lot of fear because you don't want to be beside somebody, you know, you right. want to get your connection to the limit, the, the physical touch and such so it really has a shift you know um and that's something that space is really really very important so i see that there are a lot of offices that are going to need fixing up planning yeah. replanning reworking um renovations i think um space is going to play a big role in, in the future office design for all okay i'd, I'd like to also acknowledge another question which you know uh, perhaps in Winsali do you're all you have also been exploring uh, macro design macro spaces uh, what's your vision for urban design or urban planning because I know that you're not doing just architecture and you mentioned Nikki earlier that you're doing a housing project so if we take it to the scale of urban planning what what, what do you have um, Brewing in Buen Salido Architects, considering the current situation, are you, you know, are you also reaching that or trying to tap into that 
scale of development, of partial uh, yeah. development. Firstly, we're not urban planners, and we don't mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't plan to be, um, and uh, that's because we believe in specialization. The more you focus on something, right. the more you become better at it. And so, uh, you know, urban planning, I totally respect uh, you know uh, that profession and the people who are pursuing uh, quite mm -hmm. you know larger than life ideas uh, regarding that. But that's not to say that we can't conceptualize a future at the scale of, uh, you know, a city. Um, right. And uh, related to that um, idea, uh, in 2019, even before this pandemic uh, happened, we were actually approached by a developer of cities to imagine a city 100 years from now, right, that will then become a source of inspiration or a fuel for them when they uh, strat plan. Uh, for mm -hmm. their uh, future projects. So that, that was uh, done in 2019. We presented it to them in 2019. Hopefully, one or two or three ideas inspired them um, to, to, uh, yeah, to uh, implement in their own cities, right? And, you know, that's, that's, it's, it's very similar to, let's say, Minority Report. Some crazy guy imagined, uh, you know, uh, Minority Report and all of the technologies there. But now we're living in a lot of them. Right. So though we are not urban planners, we went ahead and uh, came up with a visioning conceptual exercise, which we actually published in our YouTube, in uh, you know, in our Facebook page, Instagram. And so you're talking on. about you're talking about Wakanda, right? <laughs> Wakanda. Yes, the the Philippine cities of the future. We got really inspired by Wakanda, and you know, I really do have to credit uh, AJ Javier. Uh, mm -hmm. for also suggesting that idea that Wakanda could be a good model for a Philippine, Philippine city because, you know, it it's, for the future, it's yeah. in a cross-section of nature, people, and technology. So if you notice Wakanda, it's super high-tech, right? They have all of the, uh, you know, um, uh, technology, at uh, the forefront technology, the latest technology, but at the same time, they respect cultural expressions of uh, people at various levels, whether it's... Uh, Regardless of uh, regardless of class, regardless of scale, scale people are allowed to um, express themselves, and so so that became our uh, sort of core inspiration for the Philippine city of uh, the future. Would you want me to uh, give you a little bit about that? Sure, go go. Actually, I was about to ask you to talk a little more about that because that connects very well to my the, the question on vision for urban plan, and I'm right. sure it's it's primarily about city scale, and we're more it's more relatable for us. Uh, yeah. So you can talk about that. In, uh, yeah, so we'd like to hear. And... This, uh, it started with this idea of, um, well, I just coined this uh, phrase. No, it's, it's not in any of the philosophical or theoretical handbooks that you see. It's, it's, it started with the idea of this progressive primitivism. Right? So if you go back to our forefathers and the way that they lived, they only consumed what they needed for the day. You know, the hunter-gatherers mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and when it came to shelter, they looked at their surroundings and then they made other surroundings and thus living in caves, right? So they didn't manufacture anything. They didn't uh, put up factories to put up houses and so on. They just really consumed what they needed. They adapted to what was available around them. So uh, I'm not saying that we should revert back to, you know, wearing nothing, not wearing yeah. underwear, wearing bahag and so on. But we should revert back to the uh, to the opposite of consumerism, right? Mm -hmm. Which promotes a certain uh, commercialization, hyper capitalist society that we're all existing in, right? So progress is in our mind, but at the same time, we should revert back to just consuming what we need, and in fact, building more up the resources that is available to the world. So it it really starts from that, and so from that uh, central idea. Um, maybe we can come up with a model of a city uh, you know, that, that encourages that. So, for example, if you're a city developer, maybe part of your business model is to create prefabricated elements for all of the building developers who will be putting up structures in that particular city. So, for example, all of the buildings will be made of this, will be supplied by the central commissary, commissary mm -hmm. for building materials. Uh, for rooms that you can put together like Lego. So, you know, there's still a, a lot of creative expression, creative room 
uh, for identity of each uh, little building. Um, central commissary for the food, for example, for restaurants. One central commissary will supply all of the restaurant uh, needs of that particular scale and so on, right? So um, I, think, I think that's the core um, idea of that city. And the, a, a, a second, um, I think, idea there was to really come up with a separation of uh, pedestrians and uh, vehicles, not totally right. shunning vehicles, but using a vertical strategy, vertical separation, um, to really uh, prevent the, uh, I guess, intersecting of uh, these two paths, right? So right now, kasi parang we always uh, cross the, parang our, our cities are designed for vehicles. Right, so much so that we have to stop to let the vehicles pass by, uh, preventing mobility. But what if we require each building developer to develop, to build in his own plot an elevated ground plane, right, for people to walk on, so that whenever there's a building that is connected to each other, uh, that, that builds right next to each other, everything will be connected in this elevated ground plane, totally separating the mobility of people to the mobility of uh, pedestrians. So yeah, I mean, the video is up there, so I think uh, um, everything can be seen there as well. I think to add, because that's um, that's also very macro, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we also would like to propose to consider, you know, architecture for the common. Right. Um, there, there are a lot of common spaces that we, lack of a better term, neglect. And that's also a lot of that those spaces are, are those that play a big role in, in the public setting, you know, like wet markets, um, tricycle bus stops, tricycle pickup points. Um, so if there is a way to address architecture for the common, like where, where people really, um, if, if we can touch base with that in cities, yeah. um, that will probably provide some kind of solution in terms of how people are handling, you know, social distancing, for example, or how it can address sanitation and how it can also address um, ergonomics as well. Um, so yeah, Philippine cities of the future is one thing and architecture for the common is also something that um, should also be taken into consideration. Uh, uh, lastly, maybe um, to build on what Nikki said a while ago about color, and uh, mm -hmm. the Filipinos' deep desire to express themselves. I think that's also one of our uh, features or characteristics of a Philippine city of the future. Um, you know, compared to cities of uh, other countries, right, where um, in there is this um, almost like a, an automatic model of the glass box uh, right. uh, to represent high-rise structures. I think as Filipinos, if we see our cities represented as that it's hard to relate because you know it's it's almost like they're perfect uh prefabricated uh, conglomeration of all of these uh, uh pristine finishes but but you know our culture is not like that we're very uh we're, we're uh we're very festive we're very expressive and thus the color the fiestas but we're very celebratory we're very porous we're ve sorry porous. We're very porous Right, uh, which could translate to you know high rise structures that should breathe because we we have a deep affinity with the outdoors um, as well, and so you know um, I think this idea of identity, our true identity as Filipinos being reflected in architecture should be a common goal uh, among all of the designers, architects, master planners, urban uh, planners, and so on. But if people are looking for a list, a checklist of things to do or things to think mm -hmm. of to come up with a piece of Philippine architecture, I th don't think that should be the pursuit or the goal. I think uh, the goal is for us to continually, continually contribute to this conversation or to this holistic and collective effort to just express our identity at the current moment through architecture. Right. You know, at the end of the day, yes, we do shape architecture, but it shapes us as well, right? Like uh, Churchill said. So right. we should just uh, keep on contributing rather than uh, criticizing and bringing down people who offer ideas and solutions to uh, this conversation. I'd like to stitch two questions in one. Um, there's this question uh, typed in about, and 
of course, if they have not read your your website, um, although you mentioned earlier about your philosophy, would you like to you know, say it again and then link it to what's your insight, given your philosophy, what's your insight for architecture uh, in the coming months or years as it relates to your philosophy? Because um, so your philosophy is, yeah. So the philosophy, we, we actually came up with a book and it's called Random Responses. That's the title of the book and that's the title of, I guess, our, our philosophy in a phrase. You know, in school when you have philosophy, design concept. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really random responses. And again, there's no um, formula to it, you know? Oh. Like when you're thinking, you know, there's, there's no style to it. Because it's a response, and a response right. is something that is caused by a certain happening or a certain situation or a certain parameter condition. or a certain condition. And um, the way we respond is actually very, very crucial to how we can provide for architectural design in the future. Um, what we'd like to do in the office is really study. You know, I, I said. Yeah, we play, we play a lot, we're very creative. But also, this is where um, the logic comes in. You study whatever parameters are out there. You do your research. Um, you, you collate information. You make the rules. You gather, you gather the facts. And then after that, we can probably respond you know, as best as we can to what is given to us. We can look at the site. We can look at the people who are mm -hmm. going to use the site. The, propon the proponents, um, and then we study everything that, that is given to us and come up with a good solution. And I think one thing that um, helps us do it is the experimentation process that we have in the right. office, uh, where uh, we just don't come up with, you know, I want to do a box, I want to design a box, yan na yan, that's mm -hmm. it. It's more of how does this box evolve into something that will really solve the solution, that will really help solve or will really respond to the problem or to the concern. And right now, I think um, it's gathering a lot of information on how to respond to this pandemic. And there's no perfect solution or there's no one solution yet because things are still you know, happening. Things are still evolving. Yeah. And it's how you respond every day that builds up. Like, like what Jason said, you know, it's, a Lego, it's a Lego principle also. You take blocks and you build it up one on top of each other mix and match and you know this doesn't work here maybe let's try it on the right side or on the left side and hopefully because of that collaboration also it doesn't take one person to do it also there's a lot of an exchange there's a lot of discourse there's a lot of collaboration that comes into play um for us to come up with with concepts and, and, and ideas and, and architecture and i think that's really the foundation of of our re random response to projects it's not a definition of a certain style and say you know this has been done um, this year, you know, it's, it's dated. It's, it's, it, that's something that we really try to avoid doing. Okay. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to ask you for a quick uh, message that you may have for our audience who are young designers, students, or young practitioners, especially at this time. Uh, what, what's your you know, quick and impactful message to them? Um, know your value, know your worth, and there's always hope, you know. Um, we are currently in uncertain times, but I'd like to think hope brings us up. Um, because you have hope, you have, you have inspiration, you know, you have drive. You mm -hmm. have um, the determination to get yourself up again. Like Jason, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to be anxious, it's okay to be uncertain, but... Once you have hope, um, once you look at it, you know, it's a matter of changing perspectives also, that you see it as a challenge. You see things as a challenge. You see, you see things as, um, you know, hey, it's, it's a challenge. I took up architecture because we problem solve. You know, we plan. Uh, we plan ahead. But I guess sometimes you're not able to do so. But the fact that you're in position or you're in this creative industry, you have a purpose and, and that's the hope that keeps you going and, and, and um, guiding. Also, there's a lot of talk about passion, you know. Mm -hmm. with architecture, it's such a very difficult course. All through the five years, I think 
why did I get into this? You know, why do I have to stay up all night drawing and doing things, doing plates? But if you're very passionate at, about something, your work will speak for itself and you don't have to announce it to the whole world. You know, you have to make sure that you have your values intact and you have to make sure that your heart is there in whatever you do. The excellence and the heart um, of the matter will always come out of it, you know. Down or, okay. Or, yeah, sorry to cut you, but I have to make sure that I we get to do this segment because it's uh, something that uh, is a bit of fun and uh, will allow our audience a peek into your personal personal lives and personality. So we'll we'll do fast talk. Are you ready? <laughs> so all you need to do is raise your hand if you're the, the one. Who... <laughs> so just raise your hand if you are the one who is. Uh, to say yes to the question. And these are just nine questions. Very fast. All right. Who is most, first question, who is most likely to sketch more? Okay. Who is most likely to wake up earlier? <laughs> really? Best. Okay. Okay. Who is most likely to drink coffee more? No coffee for me. Just dopio right here. <laughs> Who is most likely to interact with clients more? What? Uh, who is most likely to do side visits more? Still Jason, okay. Who is most likely to handle accounts and billing more? Finally, who is most likely to multitask more? I think that's both. Both, okay. Who is most likely to finalize? Who finalizes client presentations more? And last, who is most likely to be more anxious during a project turnover? Okay. Checklist, punch list. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'd like to leave some more time for or give some more time to a few questions. We may have missed out on some. Uh, but I'd like, while, while, while I'm scrolling through the questions, Jason, I'd like to hear also your message to our young designers. We've heard Nikki speak uh, earlier, and perhaps you may have your own, or you'd like to add perhaps to, you know, what can you give as an advice or message to our young designers now, young architects and young designers? Yes, or so even, um, even those who are not so young. Would learn from this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right. I mean, this uh, message I think um, is applicable even uh, you know, to, to myself on a daily basis. Like, uh, first, uh, find out your, find out who you are, find out your why, because once those two are intact, then your how and what will be easy uh, mm -hmm. and flow more naturally or organically. Um, I've always believed in self-mastery, right? Uh, that you have to accept your strengths, but at the same time, acknowledge and accept your weaknesses because sure. these two will um, kind of define uh, who you are currently and at the same time, mm -hmm. become your basis on how you can evolve to be better. So who are you at this particular moment um, who do you want to be? What do you believe in? What are your values? How are you raised? What is your environment? Um, how are you responding to, in, to the environment? All of this uh, will kind of make up your identity, which now answers who. Right? So once you know who you are, then you can fuel that, uh, you can use that to fuel your why, which again is right. part of your identity. And, um, um, a lot of times, uh, people that we interact with uh, or people that we know say that, oh, I'm finding myself, I'm finding myself. And I think that's, 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 that is so, uh, is because the world imposes our who to ourselves or our why to ourselves. When in reality, mm -hmm. the who should come from within you. So once you know your who and once you know your why, your what uh, may change. It's just an expression of those two former statements. Your how and your what will change. I agree. That's so inspiring. I, 
I can resonate with that because I'm a Simon Sinek fan. <laughs> Now, um, right. we have a few minutes left, about 10 minutes or so, but I'd like now for you to use the time to, uh, to tease and to inspire and to um, uh, build up the anticipation for our audience and for the industry. What, what are your next uh, big projects or priority projects for Gonzalido Architects? Um, now at this time and, and what are we expecting to see uh, happening from and, and coming out from you? Um, as far as projects are concerned, we don't know <laughs> uh, because the world is evolving right. uh, um, in a fast rate and in a complex manner. But what we do know is that uh, we are ready to evolve with it to mm-hmm. respond to it. Um, and um, as mentioned, the expressions of our belief system will evolve in the future. It has actually uh, changed from the time we established the firm to now. We have mm-hmm. matured, right? Uh, you know, uh, to be honest, when we founded the firm, it was just about being different because there was no... Um, Because because majority of the firms in the Philippines back then were more of the norm, more of the um, sort of confined practice of architecture. So we just wanted an alternative at that time. But as we grew as a practice, as we matured, we again uh, um, concretized our who and our why. Then uh, we realized that architecture has the potential to go beyond the current definition of the craft which, you know, people would say it's an art and a science, creating buildings, you know, organizing space. But it's beyond that. Be a means of, of uh, positive change, right? Uh, because of your output, it could actually spark a fire or motivate or inspire a whole host of people to continue the crusade, right? Or it could be um, a platform to improve lives. So, you know, one of the things that we constantly pursue is housing. Uh, mm-hmm. People think that uh, we are always just involved in luxury, high-end uh, projects, but uh, that's not the case. While we uh, enjoy uh, doing that, we intentionally seek out um, housing projects because the potential to help uh, um, a lot of lives is there. So, for example, if you design one house of uh, luxury scale, you get to help the lives of five people plus the staff living in that house. But at the same time, if you design a village of, uh, let's say, 2,000, 2,000 houses with an average of five people living in a house. So that's 10,000 10, lives that you've helped, um, um, you know, um, in a direct way through, through the, the platform of architecture. So it's that constant discovery of what architecture could actually become um, in mm-hmm. the future is uh, what they expect from us, yeah. At the same time, of course, I'd like to invite everybody to, uh, you know, um, tune in on our weekly babble. So as you guys know, uh, it's always been a passion of ours to constantly learn because constant and continuous learning fuels constant innovation and evolution and progress, right? So, uh, of course, Babbel is one of our platforms for that. Uh, we were actually planning to hold a big Babbel this coming September. But uh, the pandemic happened, so we postponed that and uh, pivoted Babel to a live platform. So it's a very exciting um, um, kind of learning process for us. The cadence is we talk about architecture this week and another field next week, and then architecture, another field. So this coming Thursday, we are talking to... Um, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking to... Uh, two of the most famous photographers in uh, the wedding industry and how they, you know, maintain uh, creativity and uh, that innovative spirit to continually um, evolve, right? Um, so, yeah, all our Babel live um, videos are on Gwen- on the Buenzalido Architects Facebook page. Um, please feel free to visit because I think there's a lot of meaty yeah. insights, um, meaty discussions we've had. And um, there's a lot of, Speak. There are a lot. We had a lot of speakers give in really valuable insight. Also, that can help. Mm-hmm. Maybe discern what can happen next in in the near future. So, 
um, I'd like to invite everybody to join us on um, it's usually every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but I think this week we're having it on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, just oh, to yeah, spice Thursday. things up. Diba? Yeah. Walang wala lang. Gusto ka lang. No, just kidding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, please feel free to join us um, online and, and say hi, you know, get in touch with us also. We'd love to continue the discourse. We'd love to continue learning with you. Um, and we love also, talking. Yeah. <laughs> Learning different from different people is 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 very healthy. Speaking also. of the wedding industry, I'd like to sh- say hi to Miss Kuchi Zaldariaga, who is tuning in. Now. She planned our wedding. She planned our wedding. <laughs> hi, Miss Kuchi. Okay, so I think uh, at this point, because we'll we'll um, soon get cut, but I know that for the past hour, you know, we we've, we've heard a lot about and and discovered and rediscovered so much about design architecture and of course we got we got to know i myself personally got to know you much more uh jason and nick and i'm honored and grateful that you um shared with us your time this uh, unholy hour on a sunday uh to be able to reach out to our audience and of course now we are happy in acid that we are connecting with Gonzalo Architects i know that i am also um representing somehow foundry which is also one of your you know pet projects and i know that uh, we all share the same vision in eventually connecting all all these platforms because all of us are just working together in promoting one design industry so right. i know this is just a start of Uh, a great relationship with you um this is also something that we are um we have started uh oh i forgot it's a saturday i thought it's a sunday <laughs> somebody remind me it's a saturday see the effect of pandemic anyway exactly. um i'd like to invite our audience before we got cut and also uh jason and nikan i i know that you you've uh, interacted very much with our speaker for tomorrow our guest speaker for tomorrow is um uh a pillar in the interior design um industry i'm talking about IG El Mario so we'll have our IG live tomorrow we'll we'll uh, rep- we have already our posters up i i'm just missing out the time and probably PJ can feed me in on the exact manila time 8 p.m. 8, tomorrow 8 p.m. yeah okay so thank you thank you Nikki uh that would be That will be another uh, exciting conversation tomorrow at 8 p.m. Manila time. Unfortunately, our uh, Dominican Republic audience may be sleeping right now at this time. So we're primarily uh, talking and con- communicating to to Filipino audience. But tomorrow, the the interview with Ivy Almari will will allow um, our Dominican Republic audience and even our it- Italy audience to join us. We have a contingent, as it has a contingent in, and representation in, uh, in Milan. Our uh, and you know you're personally acquainted with Melo, uh, who okay. is our uh, represent team, our team member in Milan. And we also have, of course, our um, uh, representative in Dominican Republic, Alan. But tomorrow, since it's 8 p.m. Manila. Uh, Our Dominican Republic audience will also be uh, joining us. It, Italy is awake, according to Melo. So, she, of course, <laughs> fresh from it and uh, watching from Italy is Melo. And just greeting you now. Thank you very much. Of course, Melo of um, Melo also uh, helped prepare the the questions. So, I'd like to acknowledge, of course, the Acid team. And again. Jason and Nikki, thank you very much for uh, welcoming me and welcoming us into your, into your-